Here we have the 2023 EM EPO Race and Escape R. Both of these bikes are the top of the range. So the race model is the top of the EPO family and the R is the top of the Escape family. Both bikes feature a hydraulic diaphragm clutch, which is exactly the same clutch as a thermal powered bike. Uh, it's a diaphragm clutch, it's a mechanical clutch. Uh, there's no hocus pocus or black magic, you know. People often say, how's it work? You know, it is a mechanical clutch that as you pull it in, the clutch plates separate, which separates the drive from the motor to the final drive. Both bikes have three modes of power, a standard 125, 250, 300. However, uh, you can have them in race settings. So if the switch is up here, pull the clutch in. It's got three modes with a tick over where the motor's spinning at 900 RPM. So as soon as you let the clutch out, it's setting off or you can have it in standard modes you flip the switch down take the lanyard off it's then got rev and gauze if you're ever using it like this always remember just to pull your lanyard off after you finish with the bike because otherwise you'll mate will flick the throttle and you'll be supermaning across there both bikes share the same frame the same motor um, however the epure range has the epure battery uh, 1875 watt hours and the Eastgate range has the bigger battery, which goes back here and protrudes up here uh, for a longer range. Uh, and that one is 2,700 watt hours. The great thing is that the EME Pure and the Eastgate are in race, is that all of them are classed as a 125cc for the road. So with a 125 license or a CBT with an L plate, you're good to go for daytime use. And if you want nighttime use, we also have a road kit as well. The EPO race is designed to do trials, so the great thing is with this bike, with the three different power modes, it can suit so many different levels of riders. You know, you could have a beginner jump on the bike in 125 mode and be happy, or you could have a pro rider uh, like Gail Chatagnon to put it in the red mode 300 and also be equally as happy. You know, it's very rare that you get that in, in so many bikes. In recent times, people have also, as well as having the six modes of power, put the Escape kit onto the bike. So they've, say, bought the EPA race, bought the Escape kit, which is this plastic here, a metal bracket, the seat, and the rear fender. And so effectively then they've got two different styles of bikes, which some of them have said gives them 12 bikes in one. <laughs> so the seat unit, obviously, a bit more comfortable for long riding. Uh, so if you're doing more trail riding, we always recommend the Escape R. If you're doing more trials, then you do the EPA race, but both can cross over. Um, obviously, the bigger battery is going to give you the advantage with the Escape R for, for a longer distance, but the lighter and smaller battery is going to give you the advantage for trials with the EPA race. One of the difference between the two bikes is the EPA race, obviously made for trials, comes with the Rega rear shock, probably the best shock on the market, um, really, really plush. And on the Escape part, it comes with the R16V, uh, which is absolutely perfect for trail riding. Um, you know, it's not necessary to have the Rager, so that's one differential between the two bikes. But yeah, both are the top of the game, both great fun. So both the EPA Race and the Escape part both share the same wheels, made by uh, Morad. On the front, the tubed, uh, which is standard for trials and trail riding. And on the back, they're tubeless, which again, a standard feature for a modern day trials bike you know we run very very low pressures in trials bikes so we're about four psi in the back and six psi in the front tubeless does uh, you know give you that advantage um, you can see there the the little sort of uh, lug that runs around the edge of the wheels is where the sports hook into it just saves the sport going up and through the wheel that's one differential between the epu and the escape the race also comes with the michelin x11 Tyres, again, the best you can get. Give you loads of grip in all sorts of different conditions and uh, they wear well as well. They tend to find that with the way the power is on both these bikes, it's very, very soft and smooth on the bottom. Something that Mark Colomy has really worked hard on in 2023. The power curve is a lot softer and smooth at the bottom and then revs out harder at the top. And you'll hear in each mode, one mode revs out harder than the other. If I just turn the tick over on, pull the clutch in, press the map button. So you listen to the throttle, So very, very soft and smooth to like mid-range and then revs out a lot harder. The blue mode you'll hear revs out even harder at the top end. But also has more torque at the bottom, 
So Blue Mode is one of my favourites. I use that for a lot of stream sections, general hills. Uh, and then when it comes to more bigger rocks or stuff with a very, very short run up, that's when I tend to use the Red Mode, which is this one now. And you'll hear how it revs out even harder. So um, it's quite an accomplishment on a, an electric machine. Naturally, obviously, the power curb will sort of go like that and level off whereas now it's more like a combustion engine where it keeps on going. Uh, that combined with the tick over and the electric motor, which is like a constant revolution, the grip you get on one of these is far outweighs anything else applied correctly. And uh, when I say applied correctly, you know, if you're nice and smooth with that throttle and you're getting your speed and momentum before the hills like you should do on a trials bike, you'll get the best results. Again, not being on and off the clutch all the time also is a big advantage. If you can imagine a two stroke is pulsing twice and a four stroke four times, with an electric motor it's just a constant revolution. So once you've got that, uh, that grip, it just tracks and pulls you up stuff. But naturally, if you light the throttle up, anything will spin up. Be nice and smooth with the throttle, get your speed and momentum before the hills and sort of backing off as you're going up. And what's unusual is you can bring the power right down to nothing and it will just keep crawling and creeping up stuff uh, whereas a petrol bike may stall and that's something as much as anything it's something for the rider to adapt to and as long as you've got trust in the bike and believe that it will just keep pulling and tracking up there that's when you really start to see some amazing results and that's when it really puts a smile on your face when you think oh not just sure if it'll do this and then it absolutely flattens it that's when you really get elated <laughs> You know, I'm a trials rider, so my, my first love, if you want to call it that, is the EPO race. Uh, but equally, I've recently been setting out an e-trail, and I've absolutely loved going on that out on the East Gay Park. I've had loads of great fun. Both bikes put a massive smile on your face. Yeah, you, you really can't go wrong.